In this video series, we've been talking about adjusting journal entries. And in this specific video, we're going to talk about accrued expenses. And something that drove me crazy and still drives me crazy is I still don't have a perfect definition for the word accrued or accrual in accounting terms. And so I did what any good uh, academic would do. I looked up the term on Wikipedia for accrual. Accrued is, is too common a word and it's, it's used in different contexts. And so here's what I got. Accrual. Accumulation of something is in finance, adding together of interest or different uh, investments over a period of time. It holds specific meanings in accounting. Aha, this should be interesting. Where it can refer to accounts on a balance sheet that represent liabilities and non-cash based assets used in accrual based accounting. These types of accounts include, among others, accounts payable, accounts receivable, goodwill, deferred, tax, liability, and future income tax expense. It goes on and talks about some example, but I gotta tell you, even after reading that great Wikipedia explanation, I'm still a little bit baffled. And so, you know, when I read textbook definitions and things like that, I'm never satisfied. And so I'm going to give you a very baseline definition in my own words. And, you know, don't hold a gun to my head if this isn't a perfect definition, but it works for adjusting journal entries in, in at least introductory accounting. And I, I think we can complicate it further if, as you get further on in accounting. But when I think of an accrual, I think of something that's built up over time, but the money hasn't changed hands yet. So when I think of an accrued expense, I think, okay, there's an expense that's been building up, but I haven't paid the bill yet. When we talk about accrued revenues in a few moments, or in, actually in the next video, we're going to say, oh, that's a revenue that I've been earning but I haven't received the money yet. So again, when I think about accruals, in, in at least in, in this context, I think of it's built up over time, but the money hasn't changed hands. And those are, those are the crucial aspects here. Again, I think a pro accountant may look at this and uh, kind of want to shoot me in the head. So I hope I'm at least reasonably close. And if you are a pro accountant, you can uh, set me straight. But uh, for our purposes, I think that's a reasonable enough definition. So here's an example of an accrued expense, and let's work through the problem. So again, I'm thinking expenses that are building, but I haven't paid for them yet. Um, ABC Company has a five-day work week, and it pays salaries of $15,000 every Friday. The company's fiscal year end falls on a Wednesday, on May 31st. Uh, it says record the journal entry to adjust for unpaid salaries at year end. So we're going to do a journal entry on uh, May 31st, so I'll just date that. But I gotta figure out what to do here. And we've got to say, okay, we've got salaries, that's an expense, that's a cost, that's built up over time, but we haven't paid it yet. And sure enough, it's you know, our year end is Wednesday, we're gonna pay it on Friday. So uh yeah, that that seems to fit the bill of an accrued expense, at least my maybe weak definition of it. So the first thing we've got to figure out is how much do we owe them on Wednesday? And I guess before that, we've got to figure out what's a five-day work week. Uh, it says ABC Company has a five-day work week uh, and pays its salaries every Friday. Well, I would assume if it has a five-day work week, those five days in question are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. That would be my assumption of a five-day work week, and it doesn't seem to indicate anything else. That's the most common sort of banker's days of work. Uh, and it's going to pay these guys $15,000 on Friday. We're going to pay our employees. So today, our fiscal year end falls on a Wednesday. we got to figure out how much do we owe them on Wednesday. In the absence of other information, we're going to assume that we pay at a pretty steady rate here. And we've got to say, okay, well, how much is one day's work worth? Well, if it's $15,000 every Friday, and we're paying them for five days' work, it's 15,000 over 5. It means they're earning $3,000 per day. So 3,000 for Monday, 3 for Tuesday. I'll squeeze here. 3 for Wednesday, 3 for Thursday, and 3 for Friday. Now we've got to then say to ourselves, how much have they earned up to Wednesday? Well, I think I've kind of illustrated here. They've earned Monday and Tuesdays for sure. And we assume our fiscal year end happens at the end of day on Wednesday. So they've, in fact, earned for Wednesday. So our employees have earned $9,000 worth of salaries for which they've not been paid. Our journal entry here is pretty simple. We're going to say, okay, well, what's the expense? Well, it's a salaries expense 
So we're going to debit salaries expense for $9,000 and we're going to credit and this is a tricky one it's always going to be a payable and we want to do a payable related to expense so often it's accounts payable it might be interest payable in this case it's salaries payable nine thousand dollars and this is our debits of course and our credits okay so we've done our adjusting journal entry here. debit salaries expense credit salaries payable now I just want to remind you why adjusting journal entries are a bit tricky there's no employee knocking on our door on May 31st saying you owe us money right they are not going to worry about it until Friday on Friday if we don't pay their check they're going to be annoyed but on Wednesday we're not actually transacting any business with our employees that again is what makes this an adjustment we've just got to know okay it's our fiscal year end let's figure out how much salary we owe and do the adjustment so again that's why adjusting journal entries are tricky there's no transaction on the day we've just got to know how much salary is built up that's how much we owe accrued expenses are all, almost always going to take on this form we're going to debit some sort of an expense because it's an expense that's been building up over time and we're almost always going to be crediting some sort of a payable because it's, a, it's an expense that's built up over time that we haven't paid yet. So, you know, that results in a liability, a payable. Uh, again, just thinking about our rules of debits and credits. We debit expenses, always. Uh, we credit liabilities, payables or liabilities, to make them go up. And sure enough, I owed them nothing in salaries as of, you know, the previous Friday. I paid their, all the salaries. Now I owe them nine grand. I credit that nine grand to say, okay, I owe them now. So we've got a good journal entry there for part A. Let's look at part B. Part B says, uh, record the journal entry required on Friday, June the 2nd. Okay, so it's June 2nd. Uh, and I've got to say, well, to pay the salaries. First of all, how much did I pay? Did I pay 9000 No. Did I pay you know 6000 that I missed there? No. I pay the full amount. Like I said, the employees should be blissfully unaware of our fiscal year end as far as their salaries go. I don't know my uh, university's fiscal year end. I don't care. I know my payday. Uh, so I'm going to credit cash for just the normal amount. This is just a normal payday for our employees. Behind the scenes in accountant land, though, we've got to say, okay, when I pay them their fifteen grand, I pay off the salary is payable. Again, to reduce a liability, to make a liability, we credit it. Well, to reduce it, I debit it. I said here I owe my employees $9,000. Now I don't owe them anything. So I debit that liability to reduce it down to nothing. I debit salaries payable. But you can see I'm missing a debit of $6,000. And those astute uh, among you have, have likely picked up that that's this other $6,000 here. And the issue there is I just haven't recorded that expense yet, but now I will. I'm going to debit salaries expense. And I'm done. Uh, of our entries, this one is an adjustment. This one, not an adjustment. I shouldn't have drawn the arrow from the word adjustment. I'll put a circle there. Whew, saved it. Um, this isn't an adjustment. Uh, and how do I know that? Well, this is a normal transaction. I'm paying money. There's something going on here. I'm transacting business with my employees. This is absolutely not an adjustment. The other way I know it's not an adjustment is because cash is involved. We'll talk about what makes an adjustment in our final video in this series just in a little while. That's it for accrued expenses. Again, maybe my weak definition is think of an expense that's built up that hasn't been paid. So in this case, our salaries have built up to Wednesday. We owe our employees $9,000, debit salaries expense, credit salaries payable. Uh, then we, we went ahead and paid them on, on our second part of our entry. That's it for this one. Stay tuned for accrued revenues.